All right, Dad, just let me get through the intro, and then you can go ahead and go wild. Okay? Okay! Hey guys, it's me, Melissa, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are joined again by my father, and with his long-awaited top 10 Dollar Tree products. I know you guys have been waiting a while, you've been asking me about it, and today's the day. We're actually at my parents' house today, we're going to be filming here, so if the lighting's not uh, perfect, you know, I'm sorry, I wasn't about to be dragging over my uh, umbrella light, so. Without further ado, bring it on. And now, know that I'm probably not going to be able to be talking a lot, like, you know how my dad is, like, I might just be, like, over here making, like, faces and or being Vanna, so, whatever. So, Dad, take it away. Okay. First of all, we're not in Melissa's, so I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to be nervous that Paco's not here. So, here's Paco. <laughs> so, take in your Paco look. Okay, you're all set? Good. Okay. Now, I've been shopping at Dollar Tree for years and years and years because within six miles of this house, there's three of them. So, I'm constantly there. I don't think I've ever walked into the Dollar Tree store and not walked out with something. But what I wanted to do is to show you the 10 products that I personally buy constantly that I think are well worth the money. And I just want to share this with you out there. So in case you're looking for certain products, these are them. Okay. Top 10 today, guys. Top, top 10. 10. Yeah, top 10. Okay. And now for the first item. <sighs> okay. This is an excellent degreaser. And it, is, it is LA's totally awesome <laughs> oxygen orange all-purpose all degreaser. Yeah, yeah, but let's talk about what it's good for. I use this for the tile on the floor when I spill something on the floor. It's an excellent picks it up. I use it on the door behind me, which is the door to the garage. And you know when you work in a garage, you're constantly putting your hands all over the door and the woodwork looks crummy. You spray this on a rag or spray it on the woodwork and then you wait about 10 or 15 seconds, bada bing, bada boom, it's clean. You can use this to clean the top of your stove. You can use this on the top of the counter that's right here. So it really does its job, but remember two things about degreaser. One, if it's really dirty, you have to let the degreaser sit for a while. If you don't, it's not gonna work itself into the grease and the grime and the dirt. And number two, don't be sniffing this stuff because this is pretty strong degreaser. And I can tell you that if you spray a lot of it and start breathing it in, you're going to have a coughing, a coughing fit. But here's what's important. What is that? I'll I didn't tell know you. we had that. I'm going to tell you what it's for. I didn't know we had that. <laughs> I gotta, I'll tell you what it's for. A lot of the things that I have that I buy are for the household. But I also have a car that I put in a lot of car shows. And you know, if you put a car in a car show, you have to make sure that it's impeccably clean. One of the dirtiest areas on a car are the wheels. Brake dust, dirt, grime on your wheels makes it look terrible. I can drive my car around the corner, come back, and the wheels are ugly. Now, you can go out and you can spend $5.99, $6.99 for wheel cleaner. But let me tell you, this stuff works. And because it's only $1, you spray it on something, you let it sit, do it liberally, put a lot of it on, and if your brake dust is not too bad, just hose it off with a hose. If it's really, I mean, if you have silver wheels and they're black now, obviously you've got too much brake dust, you spray it, you get a rag, you go out and you get a bucket, you put some soapy water in the bucket, you spray this on the wheel, let it sit 15, 20 seconds, take a rag, wipe down the wheel, hose it down, I gotta tell you, your wheels will look brilliant. And it only costs a buck. A dollar. A dollar. All right. Off to number two. Number two, we got the Foaming Action Glass and Surface Cleaner. Street free. Tint safe. No ammonia. <laughs> now, obviously, window cleaner, people will say, is window cleaner. Okay? I can spend as much as $6.99 for a can of window cleaner when I have this for a dollar. Now, why do I pick a can of window cleaner rather than this pump bottle of window cleaner? And that's because this is foam. And because it's foam, it stays where you put it. You know when you spray something and you get all the runs going down, it looks terrible. And then you get it where you don't want it. When you have foam, it stays exactly where you want it. So this is great for cleaning, the, for cleaning stainless steel, great for cleaning chrome on your faucets, 
excellent for the windows. It works. It's like almost saying it's like an, a different type of all-purpose cleaner. It's not. It's more of a polishing cleaner rather than a real heavy-duty degreaser like the one that was there before. He loves that stuff. He talks about it all the time. Oh yeah, I love this. Stuff. <laughs> and here's a trick. Sometimes you you take your rag, your paper towel, and you spray the windshield on your car, and you take your hand and you go like this, and, and your hand nothing moves. The paper towel stays there, only your hand moves. Well, it's very easy to fix that. Spray the window, take your hand, tap it on where you spray, put your hand on the paper towel, then wipe, and it'll be perfect. What a little trick. That's just a little trick. That's where you get, eh, hey, wait, it's a little bit more. But here's something I want you to know. Never, ever, ever use paper towel on the paint surface of your car. Why, Mike? The reason you don't do it is because what is paper towel made out of? Paper. Wood. Wood? Okay. So if it's made out of wood, well, what are you putting on the clear coat of your car but sandpaper? True. It's sawdust. Yeah. Never use this to clean the surface on your painted surface on your car. Use a microfiber towel. Because if you use this, that thin cone of clear coat, you'll be looking at it from the side and go, boy, there's a lot of little scratches in there. So once again, this window cleaner for the dollar that it costs at its foamability, I give it two thumbs up. Alright, on to number three. We have the Driver's Choice Microfiber Wash Mitt. Right here. Boom. Okay, now, it's called a wash mitt. But I call it the Super Duper Microfiber Fingy Thingy. Now I'm going to tell you why. I have two of these. I have two of these that I use for my car. You know that when you wash a car and you use a towel and you put the towel in the water, it's very hard to hold on to the towel. And, I, and I'm sure every one of you out there has dropped that towel on the ground and gone, Ooh, what do I do now? Do I pick it up and try to wash again? Or do I throw it away and start again? Well, this works perfectly because you have total control all the time. You know, it's like saying you get a bucket. You get a bucket like this. You take your mitt, you put it in the bucket. You got really prepared for this video. Just and so by the know. way, I got I got this bucket at the dollar. You, you put this in the bucket and then you control exactly where it goes. Now I said I have two for the car. So where would the second one go? Is well, it inside? No. Nope. Uh -uh. no. No. What I do with it is, remember I told you that when you clean your wheels, you take a rag and you clean all the little intricate parts of the wheel. This is perfect for getting into all the nooks and crannies to ensure that when you're finished cleaning, you go, oh, I missed that corner, or that little point over there, I didn't get, this works perfectly. Now you're gonna say to yourself, but Mike, when I'm done with this, it's all filthy and disgusting. Well, what do you I do? have a solution. You get you your do. bucket, you, you put some of your hot water and dishwater soap, then you get your degreaser, you spray the dirt on here with your degreaser, scrub it up, drop it in the bucket, Come back about 10 minutes later, pick it up, scrub it a little bit more, rinse it. Then I take it, if it's in my garage, I take a pipe. I, I hold it like this against the, the rungs of my ladder and I let it sit there. And the next day I come out and it's perfectly clean and it's dry. That's Just good. the point, pretty good, pretty huh? Good. Okay. All right, on to number four. This is the also driver's choice, soft, super soft microfiber cloth. That's actually really, really soft. That's the brand right there. And that is what it looks like. Super soft. I would actually, Paco could use this for a blanket. Ooh, Paco could use this for a blanket. I'm telling you, if you look up the word soft and fluffy in the dictionary. This is just the, the one that, that I got off of Wish and Vova, like no joke. Paco's new blanket. If you, if you, if you look up the dictionary on the soft and fluffy, there's a picture of this rag. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I have, oh yeah. I mean, I have, isn't it? I mean, put on your foot. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what do you use this for? I use it for my car, but now I want to state something. Whenever you put anything, like wax, a sealant, a polymer on the paint of your car, you need two rags. Remember, two rags. The first rag is a microfiber rag that after the solvent or whatever you put on your paint dries, that picks up 99% of it. This is a polishing rag. It's soft, it'll never scratch anything, and it brings out the luster intense luster in the paint. 
So remember, this is not your number one rag. It doesn't absorb well at all because it's so soft, it doesn't absorb liquids. It's there to polish. So first use your microfiber towel, which would be something like this. You'd use a microfiber towel to get 90% of the sealant or wax or whatever you want to put on your car. Then you would use this to polish. So this is your polish rag and it's worth a million bucks. For a buck, you cannot go wrong. I must have seven of these in all my cars, in my a, house. And you have a butler for Paco? No, Paco, it's just sweet. Car. This is literally bigger than the blankets he has. I don't know what to tell you. Can I? Can Paco have this one? Yes, you can. Paco Aww, can have it. Aw, Paco got a tree. Paco can have it. All right, Paco can have it. We all score here today. Oh, yeah, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> all right, number five, we've got the, are these just the sizes or use all of them? Oh, no, these are just two the sizes. tool bench paint. This is the two inch and the 1.5 inch of these. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I'm sliding off the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you better take the picture. Uh, all right. All right. All right. So, in the, in the last couple, last several years, I have remodeled the whole inside of this house. So, obviously, I do a lot of painting. Now, I originally used to buy $5.99 and $6.99 paintbrushes, one and a half inch and two inch. Because I was with the understanding, oh, when I'm done for the day, I'll just clean them, wash them, and clean them. Let me tell you something. Tell me how many people out there have taken a brush, used it all day, then tried to clean it, and then the next morning come out and go, oh, I better get back to painting and go, oh, it, it's like cement. I have it a lot in my It's painting. like cement. I go, when I'm finished painting at the end of the day, I throw it away. It's gone. I don't need it anymore. But let's just say you're using this brush and you're painting and all of a sudden you go, oh man, I'm a little tired. I got like 10% left to do. I, I don't want to throw this thing away, but I don't want to clean it. Okay. There's more. Here's what you do. At the end of the day, you take your brush and you dip it in the paint. Then you take a plastic bag, you put the paintbrush in the plastic bag, take the air out, seal it, and put it aside. Next morning when you get up, you take the bag, you open it up, the brush will be as soft as it was the day before, you finish your job, then you throw it away. So you know, I actually heard that tip before. I was actually thinking about when I started doing my chalk painting on my coffee table end tables, like obviously it'll have to be like multi-coats. I'm, I'm actually gonna try that. It actually works, honest to goodness. I use it, but look at the house. You th I, I know I had used 25, 30 brushes doing everything, but if I had to finish the next day, I'd just put it in there. What a great idea. It is. All right, for our next one, number six, we have the Betty Crocker scissors. Pretty much cut and dry, these are scissors. Who knows how much you can really talk about these, but okay. The only thing I wanna say about these scissors is they're one dollar. And I use them for everything. I even cut branches on my flower bed outside with the with these scissors. So I'm not saying that, you know, it is just a pair of scissors, so you can cut cardboard and paper and everything in it. But I'm saying for all of the scissors that I've purchased at the Dollar Tree store for a dollar, this Betty Crocker one has lasted the longest, stayed the sharpest, and has multiple uses besides cutting paper. So it's really cut and dry, but if you want a scissors for a buck, buy these scissors. Betty Crocker. All right, number seven, we got the tool bench hardware utility knives to count. That's these right here. All right, now, why am I so hyped on this? First of all, I use razor blades for everything. I use them for cutting cardboard. I use them for everything you can think of. And normally I have a utility blade. But when you use a utility blade, you get, you go 10 or 12 times and then the tip is no good and then you're out of business. Then you flip it over on the other side. So theoretically, you get two uses out of that blade and then it's garbage. On the other hand, this one has multiple blades. And as she picks it up, there are at least 20 different blades on there. So when you wear out one of them, you just take a pair of pliers and you snap off one of the blades and you come back and guess what? You've got a brand new blade. So you've got 40, you got 20 on this one, and you got 20 on this one. That's 40 blades for a buck. What a steal. I mean, you, you can't go wrong. So I'm you saying for if you do a lot of cutting, you cut paper, you do craft work and stuff like that, I'm telling you, those razor blades are worth their weight in gold. All right, I can't wait to see how long you can talk about eight and nine. We'll, we'll see. Okay, all right, all right. All right, so here's number eight. It is also by Tool Bench. It is the paint trim cup. I should have bought one of these when I did mine. Yeah. What a good idea. Why didn't you buy me one? Jesus. I didn't know. I thought you would have been smiling enough to buy your own. I used the Tupperware. Anyway, <laughs> you know when you have to hold a can of paint in your hand and your paint, you're sticking the thing in, you're sticking, pretty soon the paint goes on your hand. Next thing you know, you drop the can because it slips out of your hand. 
So you need something that's versatile enough that you can set it down, that you can hold it with your hand, and I'm telling you, it's only a buck. Once again, you can use it for the day, and it has a little pouring spout, so if you have paint left over, you pour it back into the can, and then if you want, just throw it away. I, I, I would clean it again. That's a waste again. of time cleaning I it. I nah, I just throw it away. But I'm just saying, this has a handle. And, and, I, I, and I can paint, you can paint up high, not going, I mean, if you're holding it in your hand like this and you're trying to paint, it's going to fall. But if you have it on your hand like this and you're trying to paint. I wish I would have, like, I, that would have came in so much handy. I was carrying around, like, a Tupperware filled like this. Literally carrying around like this going, please don't drop it. Why don't it. you ask your father? I don't know. I just didn't think about it. You should ask you your should, father. You, should, you know I was painting. I thought you would have bought one of these. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> All right, number nine. How long can you talk about this one? Oh, now see Number this nine is a, is a spray bottle, a vaporizer. Boom, boom. Why do you need the pink one? I'll tell you. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, hey, Mike, why don't I just buy one of these? It's the same price. It's way bigger. So why are you talking about these little things? Once again, my car is in car shows all the time and I don't want eight of these big humongous bottles in my trunk. So I have a little tray and in that tray I have seven of these. Seven? Yes, seven. I have water in one. I have degreaser in one. I have spray detailer wax in one. I have alcohol in one, I have tire dressing in one. So I've created a little stack, a little tray, tray that I can pick up, put outside while I'm cleaning the car. And then the bottles are small enough so that I can easily handle them and put them back in the, and put them back in the tray after. But always make sure you, when you're finished with it that you tighten the tip. Because if you don't tighten the tip and you go like this, it will drip. But Hold on a second. But there's more. Okay. Now, here's a little trick I want to tell, talk to you about. Everybody has big screen TVs. I have three of them. And you know how they, when they heat up, they attract dust and they're paint in the butt to clean. Here's what you do. You buy one of these. You get some purified water. You go halfway up. You get isopropanol alcohol and go the rest of the way up. Shake it, you get your microfiber towel, you spray the TV, you take your microfiber towel, it immediately cleans and instantly dries because of the alcohol that's in it. Your TV will be spotless and it won't be like you, you, you're dusting it and then the dust goes right back. And you're dusting and the dust, you're cleaning it, you're cleaning all of the glass. So that's it? a tip. And again, it's a small bottle because a small bottle of this will last you like a year. You go get one of these bottles and you're probably going to drop it anyway, but it's a waste of time. So that's the reason I, this is one of my favorite things because I use it for everything. This is like the multi spray bottle. My dad is the only person I can talk about a spray bottle for, what was that, like two minutes, three minutes? <laughs> all right, I think I'm going to pause this and then bring these to the front so we can show them all kind of okay. like back to back. One moment. Okay, so now number 10 is my dad's three favorite um, body washes, so I'm just going to kind of show them up front. This is number one. This is the Cool Blast. Then we got number two. And this is in the fragrance Brisk. <laughs> and then we got this one. Now, Arm & Hammer is a good, a good um, brand. This is in the Simply Fresh. All right, Dad, talk about it. Okay, so over the last, I don't know, eight, nine years, I have probably tried 15 to 20 body washes from the Dollar Tree store. There are two things that I look for when I buy I body wash. I like a scent, not not perfumey, but like a little citrus, a little like fragrant type of scent. After smelling it, like this one's gonna be more like the like woman or man, where this one's definitely gonna have like a man scent. I wasn't a really huge fan of this scent. I like citrus, yeah, I like yeah, the it's citrus like a citrusy smell. citrusy man but, scent. And then the second thing I look for in body wash is I want it to lather well. You know, and I have bought some at the dollar store that you put on, you go like this on your, on your, what do you call this thing? Poof. 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 No, it's not a poof. It's got to have a real name. But anyway, this poof. thing right here. Shower poof. You put the bad body wash on, then you go like this and to make suds. And on some of the body washes, as soon as I get stop washing, there's no more suds. These three are my favorite. Now, I can't say that they're available in every Dollar Tree store, but I'm saying if you're a man, 
Now, I mean, if you're a woman, or a woman. Right, you will find that these do exactly what they're supposed to do. They last a long time, and for one dollar, they're really worth it because I took this one time and I went online to buy it to see what happened and it was $5.99 and I went what $5.99 and they're a dollar so I'm saying they may not have them all the time but when they do have them well especially Arm & Hammer is a good brand oh yeah and this is 12 fluid ounces this one's 18 fluid ounces and then this one is also 12 fluid ounces so you're getting the most bang out of the buck on this one but I feel like this one's probably, you're gonna use less of it than this one. Cause I feel like this one's probably creamier and thicker where this one's probably a little more liquidy. That's just my thought for okay. my body, body wash. You know. So there you have it. The 10 products that, I mean, I probably bought 700 products, but these are the 10 products that I use the most. But before we, before we sign off, my wife said to me, Mike, if you're gonna do this video, you have to wear this shirt. So, Melissa, please tell them what the shirt says. If a man speaks in the forest and there's no woman around, is he still wrong? Probably. Anyway, what's one last thing before we sign off? If everyone... Oh, yeah, no. that's my wife's thumbs up. That's my mom. <laughs> if everyone that's watching this video simply asks one friend or one relative again. to subscribe to my daughter's channel, we will hit the milestone, not me, she will hit the milestone of 10,000 subscribers. And that's really important. And if you want to see more of me, and you want to see more of me, right? You have to keep subscribing or else she won't let me come on. Because she's that a slave true. driver. That she is doesn't not true. say, unless I get more subscribers, no more dad. That, oh, that, that that's terrible. Happen. I'm pretty sure even if our, a video of ours got like 100 views, I would still do another one with you. Oh, I Thank know. God they don't, but if, even if they did, I would. All right, so. Okay, so what do you think of this video? If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or any questions, please put them down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you haven't yet subscribed, feel free. Hashtag road to 10K. Now, just so you know, if you're new to my channel and you're watching this, this is not his channel. It is my channel. <laughs> and I'm going to try to get my dad on like once a month, once every two months, so you can get a, your, your monthly fix of him. <laughs> and if there's a specific subject that they would like me to do that based on a man's view of something, if it's possible and I can do it, I would be glad to do it. I yeah. enjoy these videos. I enjoy spending time with my daughter. It makes me feel great. So this is just another way to spend time with her. So if you have any suggestions, I'm open. Yeah, make sure that that's your job then to read the comments. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Only on this one. I'm only, not reading on comments on when I'm not in. Mom it. reads the comments on everyone. Well then we're all. She's set. really hashtag teaching <laughs> chick. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you soon. Bye.